Hey, good morning, what's going on YouTube? My name's Lucas, welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be doing a really quick tutorial on the best way that I've found, personally, for bouncing out stems in Ableton Live. So you would do this process for getting someone to mix your track, collaborating on a production. This video is gonna dive right into that. If you're interested in more music production related videos, tutorials, guitar videos, guitar tone videos, anything related to music and creating music, definitely check out my channel. I invite you to see my other videos on Ableton and I have a lot of stuff on recording vocals and things like that. So we're gonna jump right into Ableton now and here I have a session that I did with one of the artists that I work with and this will be a great real world example of how to get your stems printed properly for a large session like this. So the absolute first thing that I do is Sometimes when you're kind of in the heat of producing a track, things might be a little disorganized or whatever. So the first thing that we really need to make sure we do correctly before we even get to stems is we need to make sure everything's labeled properly. So I'm gonna take you through the process of doing that. And I've done this many, many times and sent it to different people and got some feedback. So I think I've really refined this process. So I really hope this is helpful for you. The first thing that you'll notice is I have two major groups in uh, within this song. One is just named acapella because sometimes people need an acapella, and I think it's perfect to just have it named like that from the get-go. So all the vocals that are in this track are being routed through this single group acapella. And within that group, we have lead vocals, background vocals, and ad-lib vocals. Similarly, on the other hand, we have instrumental, which has all of the instrument groups. So if you need the beat, boom, we have it right here. If you need the acapella, we have it right here. And all of these are gonna get printed down into the stems. So I'll just do vocals first. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure all of our tracks are labeled correctly. And we also need to make sure that our buses are labeled correctly so that you know, number one, what instrument it is, number two, whether or not it's a bus, and number three, um, what the exact part is. So I'll be very specific about this. So this is perfect right here. We have verse one vocal, verse two vocal, hook vocal, and then any track that does not have anything in it, I'm gonna remove it so that we're not cluttered. Sometimes people might label whether or not it's panned. So I have verse two harmony C, which stands for center because it's in the center because I have other harmonies that are panned left and right. That's cool too. You just wanna make sure we know what instrument it is. So I'm gonna relabel this verse two vocal harmony center. When you have harmonies, I usually label them low, middle, or high, or just some uh, some way of denoting like what the actual voice is so that if someone's mixing it or producing it We know which harmony is not just harmony left harmony, right? Because that might get panned differently We don't know but they need to know if it's the low harmony or maybe the first second third voice something like that So for here in this post course we have post harmony high and that was panned right so I have it labeled like that So I think that's pretty specific. I just try to keep it really foolproof um, in any case, I'll probably fast forward through the rest of this. Just, you know, you, you guys get the idea. Um, so we have lead vocals, background vocals, ad libs. If you don't know what those are, ad libs are kind of like effect vocals that I use. And I just have like a, a totally separate group for them just because I may have like a bunch of different effects on that. So more info on that if you check out some of my tutorials on vocal production. So that's kind of what is nested in our acapella. Lead vocals, background vocals, ad lib vocals. You may have to do something differently. For example, if you have two different singers, we might have singer one, singer two, and then within that I like having my lead vocals and background vocals separated so that's our vocals we're done with that so we can minimize this now here's the instrumental so it actually took me a while to figure this out but basically within the instrumental I have a couple different categories of things this is actually really song specific I don't like having a template that has a bunch of extra stuff that I'm not going to use so in this particular song the main instruments that we have are guitar so I'll put that first bass a few different types of bass we have drums we have literally one synth, because that's not even a group, and then we have effects. So I'm just gonna go through these and make sure these are labeled correctly. So same rule applies. We wanna make sure when we're reading these, we know what instrument it is and what part it's playing specifically. So for example, for guitar, we have guitar plucks left, guitar plucks right. So this is actually labeled well, um, because we want the mixer or the other producer to know that the plucks versus the strums, um, and also the section can be useful too. So these guitars are labeled correctly. Bass, here we go, we have hook, sub bass, pre-synth bass, bass guitar, that, these are all labeled very well, so I'm happy with that. So this all looks good for right now. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna bounce the stem. So you need to set a region on this marker up here. So we want 
the start of the song actually ideally we would have a little bit of space in advance but i think it's better just to do it from the start for now because if you're collaborating with someone you want it to start right on we'll talk about some issues that may happen with that with latency later if you have a lot of plugins um so we set the bar with a little bit of extra time over here for the you can listen to it and just make sure there's enough time for the reverb tails to decay so we select that now we hit shift command r and this window comes up this is where the magic happens. We go all individual tracks. None of this is selected for me. We want to make sure the sample rate is the same as the project. So we, we're at 48K. You can see there's a speaker icon here to denote that. And then we're going to turn MP3 off because I don't want MP3s. We're going to turn on wave or sorry. We're going to set wave and turn this on bit depth 24 and then dither. We're going to have no dither. Dither basically is um, adding like a very subtle noise to the track if you're down sampling it to a lower rate, which we're not doing. We're bouncing it at the exact same sample rate that we recorded. And also, if you don't know what this is, leave that to mixing and mastering. They can sort that out for you. Um, so we're going to hit export. Now, this is also a really important step here. So this might be a little bit overly organized for, for some of you, but I'm going to really show you how to do this like a pro. So in my bounces folder, so I have a bounces folder that has everything categorized. So I have client projects, instrumental songs of vocals, so on and so forth. So I want to have my personal stuff separated from things that uh, people are paying me to record. And within that whole hierarchy, I have a folder that's called stems. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a new folder for all these stems. So I have my initials. It's just what I put on everything and the artist's name, which is Davion. Then we have the song name, which is rain, a version number, which is ver version one or whatever version you're doing. And then the BPM, no confusion. You could also add the key too if you want, if you think that, um, the producer would appreciate that. You can stylize this however you want, but just getting all that information in the name of the folder is super helpful. So now we're in the folder. I'm just gonna put an underscore. So if you have nothing, it doesn't let you save. You'll, you'll see why this is useful in a sec. So Ableton will automatically name all these tracks that it's bouncing. But the thing is, I don't want the whole title of the song, uh, like right here, in the bounce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put an underscore and I'm gonna hit save and it's going to print it all like this. So I'm going to fast forward through all of this. Okay, so now we're in Finder and you'll see the folder that I just created with the artist's name, the song, and so on and so forth. And so we're going to look through the stems and see how they bounce. So the first thing I, I usually look for to make sure there's no problems is all of these audio files should be the exact same size. If they're not, there's some kind of issue. And I hate it when I receive that from clients that are sending me to get mixes. You want to make sure that if you're sending stems to someone, it covers the whole length of the song. Otherwise, you may have been sending like little chunks. Uh, this usually happens like in other DAWs, but Ableton's pretty good about it. So we're going to go through these and just make sure they're okay. So we have, you can see the acapella. Um, we have all of our vocals, bass, guitar. So this is just an alphabetical order. Um, right now. So the one thing, this is the very last step in this, um, since we didn't put a name in the field for the export settings, what I'm going to do is this very last one here, I'm just going to rename the title of the song, label this reference. So that's what they can listen to. That's the master that got bounced. Everything else is labeled correctly as stems. So you may want to look through it. You can listen to it and see if it's correct. So here's one last step that I just wanted to explain. If you want to send this folder to someone in the easiest place possible. So I have my desktop set up with Dropbox. Um, if you don't want to pay for Dropbox, you can figure out a workaround. I'm just going to show you how I do this because I think it saves me some time. You can actually just right click this whole folder. And if you have the Dropbox app loaded up on your computer, it will let you share this. So you can click this. Um, you can also just grab the link right here. You can do copy Dropbox link and then you can paste that in an email and just send it to someone. If you wanted to actually even just text this, you can hit copy Dropbox link and just text it to someone like right here in messages on Mac. So that's what I have for you guys. Let me know if this is helpful. I hope this will help you keep, stay organized, be able to collaborate easier and just have an easier time making music. And my name's Lucas. Check out my website if you want some free downloads for templates, guitar tabs, things like that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.